I was exhausted from bad morning sickness, and Nigel, my husband, wasn't the most understanding. Out of nowhere, he rang me up and said, Hey, you shortchanged the lunch today. There was frozen chicken in it. What were you thinking? Uh, I'm sorry. It puzzles me why he'd call from work over such a minor issue. Brushing past my confusion, he added, You're home all day and you can't keep up with chores? I've been under the weather from the morning sickness. Plus, I'm just on leave right now. He snapped back. Using morning sickness as an excuse again? You think being pregnant is some excuse? Stop making excuses and get moving. Stop being so lazy. His raised voice filled the room. I was too shocked to answer, but my mother-in-law, who had heard our exchange, intervened. Nigel, I heard that. She began delivering some home truths. Stick around to see how this emotional journey pans out. I'm Tanya, a 29-year-old working woman and a systems engineer by profession. It might raise eyebrows for some, but I've always had a knack for tech and ended up in this field. I was employed at a leading systems firm when a male colleague said, You single right now? How about I introduce you to a friend? Since I hadn't been in a relationship since starting my job, I jumped at the chance. The introduction was to Nigel, my future husband, and a sales rep at a big ad agency. We started dating after he asked me out, and about 18 months later, he popped the question. I was on cloud nine, staring at the ring as he said to me, Here's to our happiness. I trusted him completely. Later on, we talked about life after tying the knot. I mentioned, I'd like to keep working post-wedding. Sounds good. I thanked him, feeling relieved, though his next comment, It bugged me if you just chilled at home while I worked. Gave me pause. In retrospect, we should have delved deeper into that conversation, but I doubt it would have altered what was to come. We then met my folks, who lived a distance away, and they gave us their blessings. Afterward, we visited Nigel's family. His dad had passed away some time back, and they owned multiple rental places. Now it was just his mom, Susan, at the family house overseeing those rentals. I've heard about these tense relationship between daughters-in-law and mothers-in-law, so I thought, fingers crossed, she's nice. Full of hope, we headed to Nigel's family house. When we got there, he introduced me, saying, Mom, this is Tanya. We're getting married. Her reaction was heartwarming. Oh my, you're a catch, Tanya. Good job, Nigel. I started to relax. She added, I've always wanted a daughter, having brought up Nigel by myself. It's great to have you join us, even if it's through marriage. I thanked her, adding, I'm excited about our future together. She reassured me, saying, We'll find our groove. Always lean on me when you need to. That means a lot, given my family's distance. We left on a high note and I told Nigel, Your mom's a gem. He responded a tad hesitantly. You think? She can be fierce, though. Even I can't face her then. Hard to believe, given how sweet she had been. Still, she'd been nothing but kind to me and I looked forward to a good report. We tied the knot and settled in a nearby apartment owned by her. She offered us a reduced rent, but we opted for the standard rate. My dreams of a blissful start to our married life, however, hit a snag. Nigel wasn't keen on helping out at home. Although we both work and I've voiced my desire for shared responsibility, he just won't pitch in. We handle our finances equally, but he's even remarked, After tying the knot, house chores are a wife's domain. Don't tire out your hard-working husband. I've raised the issue several times, but he never chips in with chores. At one point, I just threw in the towel, taking over all the domestic duties. Roughly a year post-wedding, I began feeling out of sorts. My stomach was constantly queasy. A doctor's appointment led to a startling revelation. You're pregnant. About five weeks in. Overwhelmed yet elated, I rushed to tell Nigel. Seriously? Awesome. I'm pumped. Wonder if we're having a boy or a girl? I laughed, saying, let's not get ahead of ourselves. That evening, I felt genuinely content for the first time in ages. We soon shared our big news with our parents, including Susan, my mother-in-law. 
My folks were ecstatic, but Susan's joy seemed to outshine even theirs. Oh, honey, that's fantastic! Pregnancy can be tough, so take it easy. I expressed my gratitude, and she added, "Reach out if you need a hand." And Nigel, you better have her back. Understand? He nodded. Absolutely, Mom. Little did she know, Nigel hadn't been assisting at home. Still, her words felt reassuring, given his excitement over our little one. And with Susan's nudge, I held out hope he might step up. But true to form, he remained the same even after our baby news. It was a tough pill to swallow. On top of that, my morning sickness was relentless. Initially, it was mere nausea, but it amplified daily. I'd get sick even without eating. Strong odors were a trigger, and I felt perpetually lightheaded, almost like motion sickness. I'd read about spouses going the extra mile during such times, but not Nigel. I took a break from my job and trudged through chores while feeling miserable, while he chilled at home. He even hinted at intimacy, as if things hadn't changed. I'm not up for it, especially this early in the pregnancy with a nausea. I said. He then sulked, asking, "Are you using the morning sickness card, slacking off as a wife?" How could you say that? It's your baby too, remember? Whatever. I'm hitting the sack. He laughed, and my illness made it hard to confront him. Later on, Susan rang, saying she was close and wanted to drop by. I told her. With my morning sickness, I might not be super hospitable, but you're welcome if that's okay. She responded with surprise. Is it that rough? I recall feeling like that, craving any specific foods. Her compassion nearly had me crying. When she showed up with fruits and jellies I could stomach, she remarked on my wan complexion. You don't look too good. Are you eating okay? Sleeping? I admitted, eating and sleeping have been rough for days. Maybe check in with your doctor. But my next prenatal appointment isn't for a bit. She urged, "Let's just go now." She whisked me off to the OB/GYN. After I relayed my symptoms, the doctor expressed concern. "You might have severe hyperemesis gravidarum. Hospitalization seems best." What? You mean I have to stay in the hospital? Exactly. You're dehydrated, and your blood tests aren't promising. IV treatment would be best. Susan, placing a comforting hand on my shoulder, advised, "Tanya, take the doctor's advice. Your well-being is paramount." That's the story of how I landed in the hospital for a week. Susan offered to fill Nigel in so I could finally catch a break and rest, getting my IV treatments in peace. Throughout my hospitalization, my husband was a no-show. He'd see my messages but wouldn't reply. After a ten-day stint, they released me. While I was still a bit queasy, the worst seemed to be behind me. When I got home and started tackling the pending chores, Nigel waltzed in late. "Hey, you're home late. Just so you know, I got discharged." But he brushed past me, heading for the shower. I tried striking up a conversation, but he snapped. You were hospitalized for just some morning sickness and left all this work. I can't deal with a wife who's this weak. What? Holding back my tears, I watched him leave in a huff. The following morning, I found him crashed on the couch. Still under the weather, but keen to avoid another blow up, I forced myself to prep his lunch. The mere act of cooking made me feel sick, so I threw together something quick using frozen ingredients. I tried waking him, but he just grabbed his lunch and bolted. A little later, Susan popped by. Rough times, huh, Tanya? I brought you some jellies. I think you can stomach them. I think I can manage the jellies. Thanks a ton. As I was digging in, she began. Not sure if now's the time, but there's something you should know. What she shared next floored me. As I was reeling from her revelation, my phone buzzed. It was Nigel. I took a deep breath and picked up, putting him on speaker, only to be greeted by his shouting, "Tanya, what's with the lunch today?" "What do you mean?" "There was frozen chicken in it." "What were you thinking?" "I'm sorry." "Why is he making a fuss at work about this?" Pushing past my disbelief, he went on, 
You've been home and you still can't manage chores? I've been seriously sick, Nigel. I've only taken leave from work. Using morning sickness as an excuse again? Pregnancy's not a sickness. Stop slacking off. His voice was overpowering. I was raising my breaking point. Why is he treating me like this? Enough's enough. Just as I was about to retort, Susan jumped in. Nigel, I heard the whole thing. By the way... Mom, why are you there? Let's not worry about that for now. I happen to know that you've been sneaking around while Tanya's been hurting. Care to explain? What are you talking about? He stammered, but Susan pressed on. Just yesterday, a woman saying she's your mistress came to my place. We need to talk. Get home immediately. She ended the call before he could respond. After that, she dialed another number. About an hour later, a visibly shaken Nigel walked in. Mom, Tanya, could there be some mix-up? Susan sharply responded. Does the name Anna ring a bell? She says she found my house using your phone's address. He fumbled for a response, then shot back. Anna? No idea. Sounds like some loony lady. Right on cue, a door burst open. Who are you calling loony? Susan had previously told me that a woman claiming to be Nigel's side piece had confronted her about their secret romance. Anna, who turned out to be his secret fling, had been seeing him for about a month, totally unaware he was married. She had found messages in his phone under wife and decided to confront him. When he brushed her off, she took it upon herself to visit his family phone. At that point, Susan swapped contact details with Anna, and with my okay, she had Anna come over today. After Anna said her piece to me, I asked her to stay hidden for a bit. You said you weren't married. You've got a baby on the way? Man, you jerk! Caught off guard, he scrambled for a defense. Anna then dropped a bomb. I'll clue my dad in on this and take you to the cleaners. He was taken aback. Wait, what? Your dad? You thought I was just some rookie at the company? The big boss? The CEO? Yeah, that's my old man. Brace yourself because you're done at the company. This can't be happening. No way. As he was freaking out, Anna shot me an apologetic glance and made her exit. So there we were, just Susan, Nigel, and me. He tried to salvage the situation. Tanya... I'm so sorry. It was a dumb mistake. Please, give me another shot. I swear, I'll be a great dad. But I snapped back. Save it, you jerk. We're through. And trust me, I'll get every dime in alimony and child support. He paled, murmuring. You can't mean that. Susan chimed in. I'm done with a clueless son like you. He looked at her, disbelief in his eyes. Mom, you too. Absolutely. Just make sure you keep up with the payments. And with that, she showed him the door. Fast forward a bit, and Nigel and I went our separate ways. The divorce got me a cool $70,000 because of his indiscretions. I wanted the child support up front, but he cried broke. That's when Susan stepped in, selling one of her properties to cover it. The twist? Now, he owes her big time. Anna also took him to court, and after she spilled the beans to her CEO dad, Nigel lost his job. Now he's burned through his savings and is working around the clock in a shabby apartment to pay back his mom. As for me, I don't feel bad for him at all. On the brighter side, I welcomed a gorgeous baby girl into the world. I've jumped back into my career, and Susan's been an absolute angel helping with babysitting. My little girl absolutely adores her, and they're thick as thieves. I'm endlessly thankful to Susan for having my back, and I'm all set to balance my job and being a mom.